I was in the local Poundland and I noticed there are loads of these double gang switches and there are two-way switches or three-way, I think they call them in America. But uh, they were selling them off for 50 pence each and it's a prominent brand. It's status. It's a recognised brand. Uh, also going under the brand of Electrek. And I wondered why they were selling these off because normally Poundland sometimes sells excess stock or if a particular style gets retired, they'll they'll get rid of the excess stock. But they also get rid of stuff with problems with the packaging. And I think that's the situation here because I was looking at the schematic here of the two-way wiring of the switch and it's wrong. Let me show you a close-up of it. And then we'll open the switch. If you're getting deja vu of opening a switch, it's because I did that uh, not that long ago, I don't think. But there's no harm opening up a different brand and taking a look at the uh, construction inside. It's very modular. So while I was pondering this, I was thinking, well, that's not right. I don't recognize the, this way of wiring it because there's a couple of ways you can wire this type of lighting uh, switch arrangement. But this one is wired such that with the common, if they actually turn this, this switch to this on position, it actually will just basically bridge out the circuit, bring the light on, and that switch won't work at all. What they should have done is go from here to live instead. Um, but that is one of the ways of wiring these. This is where all the instant experts get in and uh, tell me that that's not how you are two-way switching. Let me demonstrate. I'll show you the two ways of wiring, maybe even the non-compliant three ways of wiring it done in some countries, but not recommended. So the traditional method of wiring two-way switches is to have the common connection and you've got your two switched L1 and L2. And at the other end of the circuit, you've got your common here and you've got the L1 and L2. And you'd normally put what are called strappers between the L1 and L2. Then you've got a wire coming from here and it would go to, say, live and you've got this one going to load and the way that's configured is that uh, no matter which way these switches are configured you'll be able to turn the light on or off from any of these switches there is another thing you can do you can put an intermediate switch in and it will either just pass straight through or it will cross the two connections like that and technically speaking you could have a hundred of these switches and they'd all have control over the one light now, the other way you can wire them, and it's my preferred way, to be honest, is to have, there's your common, there's the two connections, I'll just show one of them made, and here's the one at the other end, and the two connections, so there's there's a common again, and I bridge a common, and I bridge the other connections like this, and then you've got live and load. If you doubt me, uh, draw it out in all the possible permutations and you'll see that the same thing works. Again, the strapper can be used to, uh, the strappers can be broken by an intermediate switch on the outside. Now, the completely non compliant way, and don't do this, is that in some countries, they'll have live and neutral on the L1, L2, and they've got the common connection, and uh, then that will go to the light. I'll just draw it as a bulb. And then they go to the other end and they've got live and neutral again. But the downside of this is that if you've got the switches both in, in the live position, then the light will be off, but both connections to the light will be live. This is not compliant in any way, but it is done apparently in some other countries. But anyway, now we've taken a look at the ways of wiring two-way switching. Let's open one of the switches up. So I shall focus up to a nicer height here. And I shall find a suitable screwdriver and we shall pop this open. I'll just take a random one out. Uh, it is held in by a single screw. Note, incidentally, that the screws for holding the front plate on are actually captive in the plastic. You can just pop them out when you need them. It's quite a nice way of doing things. So let's take this out without it all exploding to pieces, shall we? Oop. Here is the switch. Is this going to... It's kind of clipped together. Oh, right, okay. So I'm going to have to prise this apart. Let's see if I can pop this out. I'll just pop that over there. Am I going to be able to get this out? Yes, I am. And this is where there's a wee springy pin that will inevitably pop right out now. 
So these must just be just clipped in in the factory. Is this going to come out? It's not going to come out, is it? It's all very well clipped in. Not really designed to come out once it's been pressed in uh, in the process. So here is the wee springy pin in the back with a bit of grease or grease on it. Oh, and the contacts look as though they're actually covered in some way here. How is this going to come out? There is a little plate in front of this that is going to clip out. I think it's going to clip out. Maybe it's not going to clip out. Oh, I see. It's going to be... Maybe I should be using the spudger for this instead of a screwdriver. Mmm, not that easy. Yeah. This is where it all goes wrong, isn't it? I, the contacts have already come loose. That's also probably making really loud popping clicking noises. I don't think there's a screw in here. Yeah, there's a contact rattling about now. I shall uh, do you a sketch of what's inside. There we go. Right, so we've got the common contact at this end, and then we've got a rocking contact. Let's see if I can get this out. We've got the rocking contact, which has a contact stud on both sides. Now, it sits into a little housing in here that has a pivot. So this can rock up and down. And when the switch is pressing against it, it's got the over-center mechanism whereby that pin here being spring-loaded, as soon as it goes over the middle, it will suddenly click the switch down or back up again. And it's just a contact above and below. That is all. So I shall, I'll make a quick sketch of that and show you it. One moment, please. And resume. The doodle is done. So here's the common contact. It's uh, this connection here, and it's got this little lip in it going up the way, that is a pivot point that that contact here can pivot on. However, there's also a little guide, a little channel, to keep this centred on that so that it can't wander backwards and forwards, it just pivots on the spot. Pressing down into a little cup in that is this plunger, this spring-loaded plunger here, and that, uh, in this case, it's shown in an unnatural position. It's shown dead centre, where the switch is just changing position, but at this point, this spring is completely pressed in and as soon as it goes beyond that position it will click over to that other position giving a very dec decisive click across hopefully that wasn't definitely allowed if it got picked up the microphone uh, when it does so the contact will either flap and hit the one con the, the l2 connection or down to hit the l1 and that is fundamentally it i'm sure a lot of engineering goes into this it is rated 10 amps um and it seems to have decent looking little contacts on it this middle bar has the contact above and below, but it looks like it's got a main contact and then uh, it's been riveted in from the other side to make it uh, to give the other side the contact. But that is it. So uh, the reason it was being sold off in Poundland does look like a simple um, instructions error. I've seen that in the past that they've withdrawn products for that, particularly one where, uh, what was that product? was a USB socket, but they withdrew it because the colouring of the wires was wrong that meant people might connect live into Earth or something like that. In this case, it's not, not so bad. It just means if people follow these instructions, it won't work. But then again, before doing the project, they should learn a bit about electrical installation anyway. Was that, was that bitchy? Probably. But anyway, uh, that is it. The classic um, status switch. A very generic, typical switch. And it works. And very affordable at the moment from certain branches of Poundland.